somebody has an idea that everyone agrees with, I start naturally thinking about the other side of it. Uh, I, wasn't I wasn't kidding the other day when I said to you that, uh, I remember I was saying that um, if you want to have knowledge, you should read books from previous centuries. So I, I think that um, you're absolutely right. I think that um, every, everything we read today is at risk of being disturbed, uh, nuanced. Um, but, but so here, here's what I would suggest. You read some classic things, and I'm talking about some really old stuff, just in terms of like, people who were known to be good thinkers. And I also think that there are current mod modern day good thinkers and you have to s kind of search them out, and then you have to you have to analyze it yourself and, and figure out whether you think that they are coming from a perspective um, that's kind of pure, or whether they have a lot of biases. Like I, I mentioned to you the example before, <clears throat> there's been a theme, a U.S. centric theme that China is going to blow up, and you saw that a number of years ago with the big short seller Jim Chanos. I was at a presentation in New York where he showed all the empty cities in a, d a developing China as evidence of a, a housing boom that was going to go bust. And then shortly thereafter, there was a, a U.S. professor that said, no, you don't understand the culture of the United States, or, sorry, the culture of China and the way they're doing things, which is build the infrastructure, build the city, and then migrate people into the city. And sure, there's been overbuilding, I'm sure, and locally and, and different parts of the, of the country, but th that's an example of, a, of a, a bias, I think, that exists, it particularly exists in the United States, and with Trump in power, it's even worse, I believe, because you know what he has to say about uh, trade is not totally untrue, but it's like a lot of things Trump says, it's not also to totally accurate. He says what he, what he wants to say to move his agenda. I used to enjoy going to uh, the Barbados and and looking at the newspaper, the local newspaper, because I felt like the perspective they had looking up towards the United States and also just their perspective on the rest of the Caribbean was quite a bit different than what we might read here in Toronto. And um, when I think about all the information that flies at me, I think about trying to get away from it. I think about trying to, you know, if I could sit up on the moon and look down from above at all of the stuff that races at me every day. You know, we collect Google alerts here. I get 200, 300 Google alerts a week on topics of interest to us, like you know, the companies we're involved in, commodities that we have an interest in, uh, competitors that we think are doing interesting things, and uh, that's a. And I go through them, but there's a lot of garbage in there. And every once in a while, I find a gem. If, if somebody can escape from all of this stuff, I think there's a huge competitive advantage in investing. Like, I think if you can think longer term, I think if you can focus on the actual businesses and get away from the day-to-day -day volatility and the share prices, I think that you have a competitive advantage. I, I was just reading about, um, there's an Indian professor who's also a very uh, a big value investor, and he was saying that he's gotten rid of his television. He doesn't even know what share prices are doing on a day-to-day -day basis. He invests in a certain way as a value investor, and he, you know, he knows the share price compared to the business value when he makes his investment, and he would go weeks without it actually even seeing the share price. Um, so I think there's some there's value in trying to get out from underneath or get on top of this cloud of misinformation, misinformation that uh, we have running at us all the time. <laughs>